I got an email from somebody who's a Generate Blocks user and a viewer of this channel, but they're having a little bit of confusion over that compound selector toggle that's part of the Generate Blocks system. Now I realize if you're not used to writing a bunch of CSS, this toggle might not make a whole lot of sense. So I thought I'd make a quick video on why you might wanna use this toggle in some cases and in other cases you don't. If that sounds interesting to you, then stick around and let's get started. So I have a pretty vanilla install here of Generate Blocks and Generate Blocks Pro. And in this page, I've set up three different containers. There's a container and inside of it is an inner container that constrains our content width here. And then inside of that is a paragraph. All three of these sections are completely identical, but we're gonna use this compound selector to kind of demonstrate how it works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go onto this first inner container here, the wrapper that's inside of our first section, and I'm gonna give it a class. I'm just gonna call it KVD wrapper. We'll go ahead and start with the blank style here, and we've not applied anything to it. Now you see this toggle when you click on the more button and you click on new for a new selector. And here we have this compound selector. If we turn it on, we see we get this ampersand symbol and when we turn it off, it goes away. So all this compound selector is doing is adding this ampersand for you. You don't actually have to use this at all. You could use the and symbol whenever you need it and it's automatically gonna turn on as well. It's just more of a helper than anything else. So the first thing I wanna do is just give this wrapper a background. So to do that, I don't need to add any kind of new class to this. I can just go to background and we'll add a blue background to this wrapper. Now, if I wanted to use that same style in another section, let's say in our third section here, I could again just search for KVD wrapper and we're gonna see that same style is duplicated here because they're both sharing the same class. If I went to either one of these back into the KVD wrapper and change this background from blue to yellow, it's gonna change it in both places because they're both sharing the same class. But let's say I wanted to target any paragraph inside this KVD wrapper class. To do that, I just click on something that has that class like this wrapper here, click on KVD wrapper, and under the more dropdown, I'd click new. Now, because I wanna target something inside of this wrapper, I'm not gonna to wanna to use the compound selector. In this case, I'm just wanting to target all the paragraphs inside of this. So I'm just gonna type in P for our paragraph element and hit create. When I do that, you'll see at the top here, we have period KVD hyphen wrapper. And then importantly here, we have a space and then the P. This is what's called a descendant selector. Essentially what it's saying is select any paragraphs that are inside of a KVD wrapper. Let me demonstrate that by changing the text color here. You can see all of my text on the page is black, which is just coming through from my theme. But once I have this KVD hyphen wrapper space P selector selected, I can go in the text color here and we could change this text color to something like a light, light gray. Now we can see this text here inside this yellow change and this text here that's also using that KVD wrapper class change. But the text here in the middle did not change. And that's because on the container it's in, we did not add that KVD wrapper class. If we did add it, I'll go ahead and type in KVD wrapper. We can see that text automatically changed to white because we have a class inside of this KVD wrapper, a descendant selector where we have this paragraph. I'll go ahead and remove this class from the middle section here. And now we can take a look at what we'd wanna do if we did wanna use a compound selector. So again, I'm gonna select our container up here and make sure we're working with the KVD wrapper. This time, I wanna change the background color when I hover over this wrapper. So to do that, we'd probably just select from one of these here, but let's build it from scratch. These are kind of just helper selectors. You can use these or you can write your own. In this case, I'm gonna turn on the compound selector, which adds our ampersand. The ampersand you can think of as a placeholder for this class name. Right next to it, I'm gonna type in a colon and hover with no space in between it, and we'll go ahead and hit create. Now we can see our class is KVD hyphen wrapper colon hover, no space in between these, which means we're just selecting this wrapper on hover. So here we'll go to the background and maybe change it to blue. And now anytime we hover over one of these wrappers, we're seeing that background change to blue because we use this compound selector. Again, I'll go ahead and select that. We'll go to KVD wrapper. And if we click this more drop down, we can see that hover here has been selected. It's gonna show up here if it's one of the helper selectors they give you. But if we made something that was completely unique, it would be added to this list. So let's go ahead and try that where we use this compound selector, but we still use a descendant selector as well. In this case, when I hover over this background and it changes to blue, I now want the text to change to yellow. 
So we'll go ahead and click a new selector here. We're gonna turn on our compound selector and type in colon hover. So that way we're making sure we're selecting this wrapper when it's hovered. Then I'm gonna type a space and put in my P here. We'll go ahead and hit create. We'll go into our typography settings and we're gonna change this to yellow. So now when I hover over this wrapper, the background should change blue and the text should change to yellow. And that's exactly what happens. Of course, it's not affecting any of this text because this text isn't inside the KVD wrapper, but this one down here is, so it is changing that text to yellow. The simplest way to think about this is anything you type in here without this toggle turned on, we'll just type in test and hit create, it's gonna get added with a space between it here. But once you turn this compound selector on, it's gonna put that ampersand symbol, which like I said before, is kind of a placeholder. You can just imagine this class is there in place of that ampersand, and it's gonna get rid of the space. So with this toggle on, no space. With the toggle off, you will get a space. Now I'll put some links down in the video description below where you can learn a little bit more about how to select things with CSS. Of course, you're gonna to need to know some of that to understand whether you're gonna need a space or not. Like with most things in web development, especially in CSS, this rabbit hole goes pretty deep and this is really only scratching the surface of how to use these different combinations of selectors. There's a lot of really cool things you can do inside Generate Blocks using their selector system, but you have to understand some of these underlying fundamentals for it to really make sense. I got quite a few videos coming up where we're gonna be talking about these compound selectors as well as descendant selectors. So I thought it'd be a good idea to go ahead and prime everybody here with this basic information so you can start wrapping your mind around it and be able to put it into more practical use later on down the line. Hopefully you got something out of today's video. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you wanna make sure to see those upcoming videos, then hit subscribe and we'll see you then.